Ford Motor, along with Baidu, the Chinese search engine, making a combined $150 million investment in a company called Velodyne. Now, if you're not familiar with Velodyne, the company makes sensors used in self-driving cars. Ford CEO Mark Fields joins us from the company's Research and Innovation Center in Palo Alto, California. Mark, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks, Ruben. Now, you showed off the car using the sensors back in January at CES. Why make this investment now, and does it help you speed up the amount of time it will take for Ford to get a self-driving car on the road? Well, this investment is part of our overall emphasis on autonomous vehicles because, you know, we see the next decade as being defined by the automated vehicle. And for us, we, we view automated vehicles could have the same societal impact that our Ford's moving assembly line had 100 years ago. So obviously working with partners as well as on our own, uh, we're working towards making that a reality and putting fully autonomous vehicles on the road. Now, will you make more investments of the company if, if they meet certain benchmarks? Well, we look at a lot of different benchmarks. I mean, first off, we look at technology. And as we've said before, we will do some things on our own. We will, we will partner with others. So where there's technology that we feel will help us achieve our goals of fully autonomous vehicle and there's a good cultural fit, uh, we're always open to taking investments or collaborating and that's exactly what we're doing with Velodyne. Now you say you're also open to doing things in-house. You're expanding your facility there in Palo Alto as well. Yes, so uh, we're going to be making some news today. And again, again, this is overall as, as we stand back and look at our goal of putting fully autonomous vehicles on the road. We're making news today about autonomous vehicles. We're making news today about working with new partners like Velodyne. And we're significantly expanding our research and innovation center here in Palo Alto. And we've been here the last number of years. We have made a lot of progress and actually faster than we thought. Uh, developed great relationships with startups and with incubators. And we're going to be more than doubling our workforce and more than doubling our campus size here by the end of next year. Now, as you make those investments, you're also dealing with what appears to be a stalling U.S. auto market. How are you personally balancing the need to meet those near-term earnings targets with spending and development and thinking around the future and future technology for Ford? Well, it's all about having one foot in today and one foot in tomorrow. And as you know, we've, uh, we've said we're committed to our guidance for 2016, which is to be equal to or better than our record year of last year. At the same time, you know us well, we call it the way we see them, and we, we see some risks out there, and we're going to take those head on. But at the same time, making sure we take the long-term view, looking at societal factors, looking at where consumers are going. And that's why it's so important for us to invest for the long term while at the same time delivering today. Now, in the second quarter numbers that you released a few weeks ago, you had low fuel prices continuing to help sales of SUVs and the F-Series. But has the impact of lower gas prices run its course? Well, absolutely not. When you look at consumers, literally across the board in every segment, fuel economy is still a very important part of their purchase criteria, no matter what the gas prices are. And you know, as we've looked at the, at the second half of the year and, and, and versus our guidance, you know, we are seeing a market that uh, we're seeing lower prices and higher incentives than we expected a bit of a softer retail industry, although you know, still healthy, but lower than we expected. And of course, impacts in other parts of the world like Brexit and uh, you know, currency swings. So you know, we, uh, we, we see the market here in the US still healthy, uh, but you know, coming off uh, a bit of the top where we've seen in the last uh, couple of months. Now, I know you're working on the introduction of the new Super Duty. Is that gonna be enough to get potential buyers into showrooms this fall and winter? Well, the new Super, it's our first new Super Duty in, 19, in 18 or 19 years. And uh, clearly, customers in this segment buy for capability. It is going to be the most capable uh, heavy-duty truck on the marketplace. So we're looking forward to getting into the marketplace and building on our growth that we've seen in the full-size pickup segment, driven by our new F-150 that we introduced uh, about a year and a half ago. Now, one analyst noted that they're, that they're seeing a leveling off in the auto industry. How does that make Ford rethink its plans for the next few years? When you take into account that leveling off, you know, the issues with Brexit that you mentioned, uh, China slowing a little bit, how do you rethink or, or perhaps think differently about the plans for the next few years there at Ford? 
Well, clearly, as we look at the marketplace, as you know, our, our process very well. We we look at the we look at the environment, business environment, understand what it means for our business. To put it into perspective, you know, the industry has been, has been very healthy for the last number of years. We st we have a very solid business, but clearly, we're looking at that business environment, doing the things that you would expect, making sure a major focus on our costs but also at the same time making the investments in our products and our mobility services to drive our revenue. And that's the way we're looking at it today. That's the way we're looking at it over the next couple of years. And as we mentioned, making those long-term bets and investments for the future. Mark Field, CEO of Ford, thank you so much for joining us from Palo Alto this morning. Thanks, Ruben. On Wall Street, I'm Ruben Ramirez, and you're watching The Street.